for today's cup of coffee, we're going to be talking about a subject that actually comes from Scripture. Mm. And for those of you who may not be Christian or anything like that, I do ask you to have an open mind and continue to listen because this is not, I'm not going to preach to you. I don't preach to people. I, I had a ministry channel, so if you want to hear that type of message, I can give you a link. We do Passover, um, and so basically we we have no problem with people celebrating Easter. It's just like that's not our thing. Right. So like, but we can appreciate what the meaning of Passover. Absolutely. We, we are one of those fringe groups is what we're called mm-hmm. as far as Hebrew roots is what they're calling it now. And... We're not required to do that. It's one of those that the Christians get pissed off at us. The Jewish people get pissed off at us. So, hey, that just goes with everything else in our lives. So we just do what we're led to do. And the we cats don't. get pissed off at us. So, you know, I figure if I'm trying to do what Christ told me to do, you know, he's the one I have to answer to. But we're not preaching on or at or anything we're sharing with. Yeah. So I ask you to keep an open mind. You know, just give it a listen before you go. And I don't want to hear any of this. Well, you might learn something. If you don't want to hear about it, seriously, like you're not required to watch it. No, but I mean, I, I do ask that people just give it an opportunity. Yeah. Uh, even as far as this website, this is a very, very Christian website. Mm-hmm. And it's called Got Questions. Mm-hmm. Even how they approach some of their answers, I don't agree with. I don't have to agree with everything. You know, that's true of any website. That's true of this website. Well, that's like, well, I don't know if I should say that. No, never mind. It was like when I was like just simply disagreeing, like shaking my head in, um, church that one like years ago right but it still sticks out because i got sure um i was just simply shaking my head because i don't even remember what he was saying but i, I was just like mm, mm, you felt in your mm. spirit that what he was saying was incorrect or something was not right or right it was just like and so i got rebuked for that just one of for the simply elders. shaping my head shaking my head and i'm like you tell me you have never shook your head in church before. How fucking dare you? Who are you? How did he Who even know what you? you were thinking? He exactly. could have been. You could have been thinking with something that had nothing to do with what was being spoken. It was because I was a child and that I would not speak back. But if I was, if I was who I am now, back then, uh, you would I be. would have been like, "Who are you? Who are you again? Who?" But see, what authority do you have over me? This is the thing. As adults, adults don't go to places like that exactly. unless they do agree with that type of thing. Yeah. And so you've got this uh, bubble that we've got all these different people, these different groups in these little bubbles unwilling to listen to other points of view. But if you do not let the person like think for themselves, that of itself is against uh, is against God. Absolutely. God does not expect anybody to be indoctrinated. He gave us the ability to have logical, reasonable, rational thought. I about choked there. That's why I, oh. <laughs> I, why I just stumbled and I'm like, I'm sorry. It's all right. No problem. But anyhow, this is from this website and the link will be uh, in the description box. And it was last updated April the 8th of 2022. And the question was, how many people were raised from the dead in the Bible? Right. Because as we know about the main one, there's but there two. was more. Oh, there's more. Yeah, well, you're going to find out. And it says, the Bible records several accounts of people being raised from the dead. One of them was the widow of... Now, bear with me, folks, because this is a matter of me trying to pronounce Hebrew and Greek. So, mm. do the best that I can. Zarephath's son... And this comes from 1 Kings chapter 17, verses 17 through 24. And Elijah the prophet raised the widow of Zarephath's son from the dead. Elijah was staying in an upper room of the widow's house during a severe drought in the land. And while he was there, the widow's son became ill and died. In her grief, the woman brought the body of her son to Elijah with the assumption that his presence in her household had brought about the death of her boy as a judgment of her past sin. 
God doesn't do that. Yeah. Elijah took the dead boy from her arms, went to the upper room, and prayed, Lord my God, let this boy's life return to him. Then Elijah stretched himself self out on the boy three times as he prayed, and the Lord heard Elijah's cry, and the boy's life returned to him, and he lived. The prophet brought the boy then back to his mother. Hmm. Now, there's quite a few of these interesting accounts. Then we have the Shumanite woman's son, and again with the prophet Elisha, what not Elijah, sh- Elisha. What is a Shumanite? I've never uh, heard of that before. It was a, a group of people. Mm. Don't ask me to is explain this stuff. Is it sort of like, like, stuff. like the derivative of Amish with the Mennonites and stuff yes. like that? Yes, that you had, it's, yeah, that's a good example that you had different little factions of people. Okay. So that's exactly what it was. Yeah, that's all. And Elisha regularly stayed at the uh, at Shumanan in an upper room prepared for him by this woman and her husband. And one day when Elisha was at Milk uh, Carmel, or yeah, I think that's the only way you can pronounce that one. The it can couples, be caramel or caramel. No, this is caramel. <laughs> the young young couple's son, or the couple's young son died. The woman carried the body of her son to Elisha's room and laid it on the bed. Then, without even telling her husband the news, she departed to Carmel to find Elisha. When she found him, she pleaded with him to come to a shunman. Elisha said to his servant ahead, to go ahead of them with instructions to lay Elisha's staff on the boy's face. As soon as Elisha and the Shumanite woman arrived back home, Elisha went to the upper room, shut the door, and prayed. Then he stretched out his body on top of the boy's body, and the body began to warm. Elisha arose, walked about the room, and stretched himself out on the body again. The boy then sneezed seven times and awoke from death. Huh. Yeah. And, and you know, woke up from the coffin and asked for a glass of water and right, laid back down. Right. And, and there's a part of me that's like, was this some form of almost like early CPR or something? We don't know. It could have been for all we know. We don't know. Then we have the man that was raised out of Elisha's grave. And this comes from 2 Kings 13, uh, 20 through 21. Uh, the Shumanite's son was 2 Kings 4, 18 through 37. And Elisha is connected with another miracle that occurred after his death. Sometime after Elisha was dead and buried, some men were burying another body in the same area. The grave diggers saw a band of Moabite raiders, and as they were approaching, rather than risk an encounter with the Moabites, they threw the man's body into Elisha's grave. Scripture records that when the body touched Elisha's bones, the man came back to life and stood up on his feet. Was he just bones? No. The, a sack Elisha's, of bones. No, this was the man that was recently being, being buried. Elisha had already turned to bones. Now, you got to realize, within that period of time... What am I supposed to do with this ratchet <laughs> sack of bones? <laughs> what they would do, they would bury a person, uh-huh. and then, like, after a year, they would dig the bones back up. They would wash them. They would put them in this little stone uh, container. It was called an ossuary. And then that was called the second death. Hmm. And so then it was a matter of putting them in like, I don't know, some kind of little shelf or something. Was sort of like maybe like a mausoleum. Was So I know this was like common back in like the 1700s and the 1800s and I think a little bit before that. Um, catatonia was a thing where people thought that's why a lot of right. people uh, buried people alive because they did not know right. what catatonic state was. They thought they were just dead. Do you think it, that could have happened back then, too? Oh, I'm sure that there's always been accounts of, of catatonia. But one of the things that is interesting about that, even though they may not appear to have breath or a heartbeat, would the skin color pallor out like that of somebody who is dead? That's a good question. I don't... Yeah. Because, like, when a person dies, it turns almost like a grayish. Yeah. And it's... Ooh. Yeah, it's very distinctive. Yeah, it's creepy. So, you know, it looks like somebody that had catatonia that they may become very pale, but I can't imagine them getting that death, you know, Yeah. gray, blue. Blue. Like that lady on one of my aunt's couch. Oh, God, don't talk about that. But one of the, um, one of the ones that we were talking about that the kids dying 
mm-hmm. in, in Scripture, it talks about that he had been out in the field and he had said something about his head hurting greatly and he fell down dead. Yeah. So you don't know whether the kid had like some kind of brain aneurysm or something like that. But anyhow, so mm. these are interesting accounts. Yeah. So, but as far as throwing a body in a grave that's already got bones in it, and then that body resurrecting, that's pretty significant. Yeah. I, I personally, if you throw a corpse on top of a, even if it's bones, that's still a corpse. Well, people did that. That just seems, still did that. That seems a bit disrespectful. No. For me, that seems a bit disrespectful, but I don't know. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's it's one of those, they must have been, it says they were burying him near him, but it must have been so near to him that, you know, some of the bones were uncovered. Mm-hmm. So, uh, it, that power was still there. That's different than burying them on top of something. Exactly. Well, they did that a lot of times to save space. Then we have the widow of Nan's son, and this was from Luke 7, 11 through 17. And this is the first person that Jesus raised from the dead. Um, and, and it's one of those, if you hear me refer to him as Christ a lot, which Christ means, or Messiah is the anointed Well, one. they're basically the same It is. Person. That's who I'm talking about. And it's like, I will use the Hebrew term a lot of times, which is Yeshua. And that pisses people off. So I heard somewhere that you're not like Yeshua is a sacred name and you're not supposed to say that unless no. you're of some sort of authority. But I, I th- no. yeah, that just doesn't sit right with me. The That's authority a- comes through him. Yeah. And it's like he who calls upon the Lord. Well, how are you going to call upon like, the if Lord you if believe, you're not going to say his if name? If you believe in him, then you automatically have the authority to say his name. Michael Heiser, go and search Michael Heiser. He will clear up a lot of mythology that has surrounded scripture since the beginning Hmm. the man can read all these languages in their original form he puts them in the context of the time that they were written he is i I have just been very grateful for the ability to learn from him i think i just broke my neck that's all right don't do that (laughs) anyhow it says that it's not that it says, as the Lord approached the town of Nan, he met a funeral procession leaving the city. In the coffin was a young man, the only son of a widow. When Jesus saw the procession, it says his heart went out to the woman and he said, don't cry. Jesus came close and touched the coffin and spoke to the dead man. Young man, I say to you, get up. Obeying the divine order, the man, the dead man sat up and began to talk. <laughs> now, see, he didn't even, I mean, he just touched the coffin yeah so there was no kind of early cpr going on there that is a miracle right oh there. sure and then there was jairus's daughter and this is from luke 8 40 through 56 jesus also showed his power over death by raising the young daughter of jairus a synagogue leader the lord was surrounded by crowds when jairus came to him begging him to visit the house and heal his dying 12 year old daughter Jesus began to follow Jairus home, but on the way, a member of Jairus' household approached them with the news that the daughter had already died. Jesus turned to Jairus with words of hope. Don't be afraid. Just believe, and she will be healed. Upon arriving at Jairus' house, Jesus took the girl's parents, along with Peter, James, and John, and entered the room where the body lay. There he took her by the hand and said, My girl, or my child, get up. And her spirit returned, and at once she stood up. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's just like as far as there there is a prayer that you're supposed to say, or you can say when you wake up in the morning, as far as the, your spirit returning into your body. Yeah, there's a thing, like it's, it's one of these like folk tales or whatever. Basically, so you know the sensation when you're falling and yes. then like you jolt awake? Um, there is a like old folk tale or whatever like people say oh that's the angels carrying you away from your body but sometimes they're a little bit clumsy and they drop you yeah no that ain't what happens on that no i know but i thought that was yeah just that's pretty amusing it is amusing it's like I'd, I'd rather not think about clumsy but what angels if, what it like seriously when you think about that what if that's what's happening what I think if it's it a is, spiritual something what if it is your spirit trying to leave its body and it's like well i think like, no nope, can't go back yet well Forgot. yeah i mean it's just sort of a sudden jolt on that um 
I think that dreams and stuff is a spiritual experience. I mm-hmm. think sometimes they're not just dreams. It is a matter of travel. Different dimensions. Yeah. Yeah. Well, dang, I wish I could stay in some of those dreams, wouldn't you? Well, we have work to do <laughs> in this one. That's that's why how that works. Yeah. Then, of course, one of the ones that people have heard about greatly, and that is Lazarus. And this is from John 11. And the third person that Jesus raised from the dead was his friend Lazarus. And word had, had come to Jesus that Lazarus was ill, but Jesus did not go to Bethany to heal him. Instead, he told his disciples... This sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory so that the that God's Son may be glorified through it. A couple of days later, Jesus told his disciples that Lazarus had died, but he promised a miracle. When Jesus reached Bethany four days after Lazarus' death, Lazarus' grieving sisters also greeted Jesus with the same words, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Jesus, speaking to Martha, promised to raise Lazarus from the dead and proclaimed himself to be the resurrection and the life. And then Jesus asked to see the grave, which was actually a tomb. When he got to the place, he commanded that the stone be rolled away. And this, that was where one of my favorite verses in the, you know, in the Bible it says, But Lord, he stinketh. <laughs> He's thinking, Lord. Now remember, you know, you this there. is a hot environment, and even if somebody was put in a tomb, it's still a hot environment. That is a stink. Un- that is a stench unlike any right. other. Right. Cor- rotting corpse. Absolutely. Is a stench like any other, well, just without heat. Any kind of putrefaction and stuff. But anyhow, when they rolled the stone away. Christ called out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out or come forth. And he came out. He walked out. Now, now picture this. This is man who is beyond doubt dead. Uh Uh-huh. And he comes out. He still got the burial shroud on him. Question, was he still rotting or was he Oh, I'm sure that he was. I'm sure he was fully healed at that point. Okay. You know, because Christ does not do things half-assed. Because it's like. I'm sorry if, like, a zombie comes no, out, like no. a rotted zombie starts to come out. I'm going to go the opposite no, way. No, it's not going to be like that. Anyhow, it says, many of the Jews who had come to visit Mary had seen what Jesus did and believed in him. Others, however, refused to believe in Jesus and plotted to destroy both Christ and Lazarus. Hmm. That's fucked up. Yeah. That's fucked up. Yeah. So, and that's something that uh, at some point I need to go back and and find what happened to Lazarus. Yeah. Did they kill him because they did not want others to believe that Christ was who he said he was? I don't Like when I was in church, like all those years or whatever, I don't really remember them saying anything about Lazarus. Or any of this stuff that we have talked about because you've got people that are totally biblically illiterate but are trying Michael. to teach absolutely it's in christ himself he said the blind leading the blind they both fall in a ditch actually study your shit brother dewey shh, shh, don't do that in here i ask you to be <laughs> respectful before we even started this hey they were disrespectful <sighs> towards me it, it doesn't matter you're responsible for you you're not responsible for them i was a kid i didn't deserve that we we trying to be uplifting today, not do your therapy about <laughs> Let me do my therapy. I canceled my therapy for this Monday. <laughs> but the, the, honestly, what Kid is re- retelling is why a lot of people do not believe. Yeah. They equate Christ with people that are trying to represent him. But and the, there's a strong disconnect most of the time. But if it wasn't for the fact that I'm like, no, my study journey, my journey with that is not done right that would not have led me into my own studies and such like that that's why my relationship is my relationship with god it is and that and the fact that our family had experiences that god was the only person we could turn to absolutely yeah and that he's still the one that is holding he's the glue that's holding us together Mm -hmm. (laughs) so i may argue with him but everybody argues with god once in a while uh, yeah and that's not that that is part of that wrestling with God. That God does not want you to be a little robotic, yes or no, sir, go on through. No. Again, he wants you to seek the truth. Mm-hmm. He wants you to seek his truth. 
he doesn't mind, he, you know, people asking questions. Gandhi. Uh, what, what was it? That I love was? Gandhi's quote. He said, I like your Christ. He said, I don't like your Christians because they're so unlike your Christ. And he was right. He was right. So, anyhow, various saints in Jerusalem. Mm-hmm. And this is from Matthew 27, 50 through 53. And the Bible mentions some people who were raised from the dead in mass at the resurrection of Christ. See, I had told you about this before. Yeah. And when Jesus died, it says the earth shook, the rocks split, and the tombs broke open. And those open tombs remained open until the third day. And at that time, the bodies of many holy people were raised to life. They came out of the tombs after Jesus' resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared to many people. Yeah, people forget that part, too. On the day that, heard that, that Jesus was raised to life, these saints were also raised and became witnesses in Jerusalem. I had told you about that. I just had not found the exact scripture. Hmm. And, and you did tell me about, like, the fact that it was a mass thing, but yeah. I don't remember you telling me about, like, they went out and such like that. Well, what did you them. think? They just set up and then laid <laughs> back <laughs> they down? They just went back. Yeah, no. they just laid back down. No, no, no. <laughs> Anyhow, then we've got one that is Tabitha, and that was Acts 9, 36 through 43. And Tabitha, whose Greek name was Dorcas, was a believer who lived in the coastal city of Joppa. Her return to life was performed by the Apostle Peter, and Dorcas was known for always doing good and helping the poor. So when she died, they laid the body in an upper room and sent for Peter, who was in the nearby town of uh, Lydda. Peter came at once and met with the disciples in Joppa, who showed him the clothing that Dorcas had made for the widows. So Peter sent out of uh, all of them out of the room and prayed. And then he turned toward the dead woman. He said, Tabitha, get up. She opened her eyes and seeing Peter, she sat there. Uh, he took her by the hand and helped her to her feet. And of course, the news spread uh, quickly throughout the city. This one... I wish that I didn't have to try to pronounce this name because this is total Greek and I don't do well with it. Uh, Eutychus? Eutychus? It may be Eutychus. It seems like I've heard of that I think it's more so Eutychus. And he was a young man who lived and died in uh, Troas. He was raised by the dead by the Apostle Paul. The believers in Troas were gathered in an upper room to hear the Apostle speak. Since Paul was leaving town the next day, he spoke late into the night. And one of his audience was, say it again, Eutychus. Eutychus, who was sitting in the window, fell asleep, and fell out. Three stories, you know. Damn. So if you if you ever fall asleep in church, it's okay. Don't stand Just your make window. sure you're not in the window. And so Paul went down. And says he threw himself upon the young man and put his arms around him. And Eutychus came back to life. Went upstairs, ate a meal with the others. And it says that then the meeting finally broke up at daylight. They must have been Pentecostal. Yeah. And the people took the young man home alive and were greatly comforted. <laughs> I always <laughs> loved that story. <laughs> One time I fell asleep in church and the pastor's like, sl- he was in a... It wasn't because of me. He was just in one of his, like... Well, he seemed to always be that way. he slammed his hands on the podium, and I'm like, whoa! <laughs> <laughs> what the? Like, it was a harsh, like, whoa! I'm good, I promise. You know, it's funny. There is a difference between somebody becoming passionate about what they're saying and people who are grandstanding. He was grandstanding. Of course he was. Of course he was. And then <laughs> what? But me, being the undiagnosed ADHD, well, the unmedicated, I'm still unmedicated. Right. But having ADHD, I couldn't help falling asleep. Oh, I'm like that. I thought there was something wrong with me for yeah. years. Because when when ADHD people are forced to sit still, it's either full throttle or dead halt. Yeah. And so if we're forced to sit still for a certain period of time, we do fall asleep. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. So, yeah. And then people it's go, it's demonic. Even if it's a subject that we are enthralled with, like we actually enjoy, right. sometimes it's just like, it's almost like a form of narcolepsy. And yeah. it's like, and you it just conk right. out. Right. So, 
<laughs> it's not just us. No. There's documentation on this stuff. And then the probably most famous person to be raised from the dead was Christ himself. Mm-hmm. And uh, his death and resurrection are the focal point of Scripture and the most imp- one of the most important events in the history of the world. And the resurrection of Christ is notably different from other events in which people rose from the dead. Uh, and as far as the Christian belief that that is what our hope is based on, is that as he raised from the dead, we will be raised from the dead. Yeah. Yeah. So... And that was a scriptural basis mm-hmm. of, of that. And we think uh, these being miracles, but if somebody is brought back to life today through CPR or, uh, you know, the different forms of resuscitation and stuff, that's miraculous. Mm-hmm. And in in my view of the world, God gave us the knowledge to produce such events. I agree with that. I yeah. absolutely do agree with that. Yeah. So, resurrecting from the dead. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you want to be resurrected? Personally, if, like, I conk out, I want somebody to try to bring my butt back. Well, it depends on the circumstances. Yeah. But, like, if, if I was, like, having a good a good r- run... Right. And I just conk out all of a sudden, well, no, bring me back. My duties ain't done yet. Right. Well, I think that that's a matter of the family praying about that. Um... You know, there there is a choice. So there is a DNR, which is do not resuscitate. Mm-hmm. That if someone is sick, you know, if they're dying with cancer or some other dreaded disease or whatever, why would they want to be brought back? Exactly. And that is an individual choice. I get that. Yeah. But for some of us, you know, with our, our belief systems and stuff, we trust that we go on to something better. Mm-hmm. And that the tour of duty here is over at that point. Oh, I think all of us are, like, ready to, like, meet God and be like, give me a hug. Right. Absolutely. Like, you brought us home. Thank you so much. And and we we do understand as far as people that have been wounded by religion. And those of you who's who have been on the channel for a while, we you understand that wounded. we have been deeply wounded by religion. But it was, and it took uh, many years for me to, and, and also deeply you know supernatural events for me to be able to separate christ himself who he is Mm -hmm. from the people that are very poor representatives of him yeah and that was when it was a matter of studying for myself i would pray about i still do this if it's scripture that i don't understand i will pray about it ask for wisdom and understanding and usually within i don't know anywhere from days to weeks the answer will come, will come, and that doesn't mean that that it comes from on high. That you know, I have had that inner voice speak to me before, but I will think I'm randomly looking at something on the internet or randomly turning on something uh, on the Roku, and there the answer will be. I've had that. Well, that's like one of mine was like the reference towards Wizard of Oz and something that you were watching earlier. Um, I think it was Leo King or something. They mentioned Wizard of Oz, sure. and I'm like, yeah, okay. Those are confirmations on different things. And it's mm-hmm. not just about Scripture. It's about other things that you may have questioned about. Yeah. So, so like, I can't remember what I was going to say now. It's okay. I prayed about, I did not know how to fix oh, the yeah. bathtub drain one time. Prayed about it, and then all of a sudden, it was like the information came. This is how you do that. That's what I was. I was going to say something like, people expect like immediate responses. Right. That's completely unrealistic. Well, sometimes it happens, but most of the time, now you gotta stay you, with it for a day or two. Exactly. You gotta keep on that praying, and eventually, sure. you will get that re- that answer. Sure. I mean, it's like we've been praying about a particular set of circumstances since 2013, and we still have not to have an wisdom that. and understanding and help us understand the why behind it and mm-hmm. and to continually cry out for mercy and for god to take pity on this individual and it's just on a daily basis absolutely and with our backdrop of pray without ceasing if you have kids that's exactly <laughs> you know that the, you live that every day doesn't matter how old they get you live that every day you do that dad does that 
Hell, even Nana does. Oh, your that. Nana does it lots. Yeah, yeah. Because I know if I had not had a praying grandmother and mother that I used to tell people that I would not live to the age of 21, and I almost didn't. So the fact that I am still sitting here all these years later, that in itself is a miracle. Yeah, absolutely it is. And the road that I have walked has been extremely broken, which is why I would never point a finger at someone else because I know where I've been. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. So. Anyhow, if you've had experiences with paranormal, supernatural encounters with UFOs, aliens, cryptids, if you've had miracles in your life, if you've had family members or something that were resurrected from the dead, if you've got local, regional family myths, legends, send all that to us. An email, cup of coffee with scream at gmail.com. And the email address is there in the description box so you don't have to try to remember all that. Tell us what you celebrate. Do you celebrate Easter? Do you celebrate Passover? And if you don't celebrate any of those, what do you celebrate? Right. Well, I, I want to know. Personally, sure. So. Other belief systems, uh, you know, as far as if, if we have people that are Muslim listeners, if you've got if Hindu, Buddhism, Shinto, any of these things, we're very much open to listening to you. Yeah. Exactly. Like, that's the whole point about God. You're supposed to listen to others. Rather right. You're not supposed to shove your own beliefs down no. people's throats. It's a matter of showing people. Mm-hmm. Sharing an yeah. experience. Yeah. If they want, if they want sure. to be, you know. Yeah. And if you like this video, don't forget to like, share, comment, and most of all, subscribe and click that notification button for daily notifications of a daily uploads. <laughs> Let me redo that. If you like this video, don't forget to like, share, comment, and most of all, subscribe and click that notification button for daily notifications of our daily uploads. Thank you all, and have a good, <laughs> have a good Passover, <laughs> Easter, whatever. Yeah, and it's like Resurrection Day if you want mm -hmm. to do that. Yeah. And that can be any, any day, every day. Mm -hmm. Know that you're loved, and thank you for uh, sharing coffee with us, and we'll see you on the next cup. Yes. Bye. Mm, bye. Oh.